My name is Peter, and welcome to another video about Silver Heels, my Rhodes 22. In this video, we're going to talk about hardware for the gooseneck. The gooseneck is the connection between the boom and the mast, and this is probably only going to be relevant for boats that have uh, inner mast furling mainsail. Uh, boats with a standard mainsail uh, probably have a gooseneck that's configured somewhat differently. If you watched uh, the video I made earlier this spring about rigging changes on Silver Heels, then you should be aware that among the changes I made were changes to the lines that furl and unfurl the inner mast furling main. Uh, the details are in that video, but the short story is that I made those lines longer and I made them run up to uh, the mast and then down to uh, the, the cabin top to make them more accessible. But one of the unintended consequences of that change is that when furling and unfurling, now there's, there's more force being put on the gooseneck hardware. Basically, uh, either process tends to push or pull the boom uh, towards the mat, so you get compression forces there. And I found, unfortunately, that the hardware uh, that uh, General Boats uses, while uh, probably perfectly adequate um, for the way they intended the IMF to work, uh, was not up to uh, the new stresses that I was putting on them. So uh, th these are bits of metal that got quite uh, mangled, and uh, so I needed to find new hardware that would serve the same purpose but was more heavy duty, which I'm happy to report I was able to find. Uh, so we'll pull the camera in uh, so you can see uh, what I'm talking about here. So this line of hardware closest to you is the original hardware uh, that I took off the boat. I have, I have uh, tried to straighten some of these pieces out uh, a bit from the condition they were in when I took them off the boat, but um, so they, uh, they look a little better than they did, but they still can't be uh, assembled <laughs> anymore. Uh, so the way this worked, uh, well, the way a gooseneck works in general is uh, you, you, it needs to be able to provide uh, motion left to right and up and down and the general approach is uh, to have two U-shaped brackets and a piece in between uh, called a universal. And this one gets pinned uh, vertically and this one horizontally. And that provides uh, the freedom of motion required. So uh, the initial installation, uh, this U-bracket was attached to, to this piece the general boats makes. Uh, which slides up and down the aft edge of the mast. Uh, the attachment was made uh, with a quarter-inch flathead um, bolt and a lock nut, and a finish washer was thrown in for good measure. <clears throat> and then that was pinned to the universal, which was in turn pinned to this item, which is called a fork. Uh, <clears throat> and that's attached to the boom. And we'll come back to uh, that subject, attachment to the boom in, in a moment. So all of these pieces uh, are made by a company by the name of the Dwyer Aluminum Mast Company, which uh, provides <clears throat> a lot of the standing rigging for uh, the Rhodes 22. Um, I believe that they actually uh, have produced the uh, IMF mast, um, which is a proprietary General Boats item. Uh, and Stan has said in the past that you know they do the work, but he owns the die, so they can't make you one. Uh, so I did uh, find they do have a website uh, with a, with an online catalog, and with some poking around, I did eventually uh, find. Uh, the, the fork and the universal in their online catalog, I did not find the uh, light duty U-bracket uh, 
in their catalog, which is a little odd because it's the only item here that actually has the name Dwyer stamped in it. <clears throat> so uh, I could have reordered these, but obviously that um, wouldn't help. Um, and uh, in the initial period, when I couldn't find the pieces I was looking for, uh, this was an interim solution. Uh, so this is uh, an eye bolt, uh, not your Home Depot eye bolt. This is from McMaster Car. Uh, it's stainless steel, and the eye is uh, welded shut for added strength. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I attached this to the boom and reused uh, the U-bracket on the mast, and, and that worked okay. Uh, but I was nervous that it, that it might find a way to, to bind up, although it doesn't seem to want to. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, the, the inside di diameter of that is uh, uh, three-quarters of an inch, and I think the, the larger that is, the more likely you are to have a binding problem. Uh, but not being completely satisfied with that. I did continue to search and did eventually find uh, these heavier duty gooseneck pieces uh, on the, the Dwyer site. And the location uh, is not obvious, or it wasn't obvious to me, so I'll do a little segment towards the end of this video uh, to show you how to find these items. So the, the basic design here again is the two C brackets um, with the universal in between, these are heavier duty. You know, this item is uh, stamped and then folded where this is a solid piece. Uh, so I think it's gonna stand up better. Uh, these bolts were also uh, on that same web page, So I went ahead and ordered them. Uh, these are 3 8 of an inch and match the hole in the U-bracket but uh, I'm not gonna use them, and there's two reasons for that. The first is that the, the heads of the bolts, sometimes they'll clear, sometimes they won't. So the universal can't always uh, pivot entirely freely. Uh, so uh, that's certainly an issue. Uh, you probably could do something like uh, file down the, the head just a bit but the other problem is they're the wrong length. Uh, this one is too short and this one is too long. So we've got these items instead. Again, from McMaster Car. These have a smaller head known as a button head. Instead of the hex head, it's got an indentation, a hex indentation. Uh, you can use an Allen wrench on. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, now this can be used to attach one U-bracket to the mast fitting. I did have to enlarge the hole to the 3 8 inch. Uh, and uh, there is uh, just barely room for the nut to fit uh, alongside this donut thing. Um, so that fortunately worked out. Uh, and this end gets attached to the boom and now the, the way uh, that uh, the boom end attachment works in the Dwyer uh, universe is that it, it goes through a end cap uh, on the end of the boom. Uh, but General Boats doesn't use the end cap on the mast end of the boom because it would interfere with the mast furling line. So uh, they had to engineer something different, and they uh, pin the mass connection in place with two number 10 bolts. And that requires having two holes uh, through the shaft of uh, the fork in this case, <coughs> and the bolts in this case. <coughs> and those holes need to be aligned um, pretty precisely in order for, for things to line up. So as you can see, when I was practicing with the U-bolt here, uh, I have <laughs> several holes in there, and none of them are really that well centered. And when I use this, really, I could only get one of the two uh, bolts uh, 
to, to line up uh, with the holes on the mast. So uh, it, it did take some doing. One of the techniques that seemed to produce uh, better results was to use the original piece as kind of a template and guide uh, for drilling the holes in the new piece. Um, but if you want to do this project, I'd suggest you know spend some time practicing on cheaper hardware and probably get a couple of these pieces because uh, uh, you, you know, might not get it right the first time. All right, uh, so those are the pieces involved. Um, we can move on to see how they uh, fit together. So we've attached one of the U brackets to the mast slider piece uh, using the shorter bolt uh, bolted through. And the, the tools for that uh, were a 9 16th uh, wrench and a 7 32nd Allen wrench. And uh, now we need to attach the other U bracket to the mast, uh, to the boom. Uh, this is the top edge of the boom, and in the slot uh, here at the mast end, uh, a tube has been inserted, and it seems to be being held uh, by friction. I don't see anything else going on, um, but it's it's in there pretty solid. And the idea of that uh, is about three eighths to match our three eighths bolt. And so making this attachment is simply a matter of sliding that in. And if I can do this one-handed, there we go. Uh, putting our keeper bolts into the holes provided. And those come through uh, to the back side. And we'll put the uh, nuts on there. So now with one of our U-brackets connected at the mast side, and the other connected to the boom. Uh, we connect the two U-brackets together with the universal. Uh, naturally, and a final installation, we'd keep those in place with cotter pins. But uh, there's our universal joint for the gooseneck, up, down, and left right motion. So that concludes the uh, show and tell about the gooseneck parts. What I want to do next is uh, go to the Dwyer website and show you how to find the gooseneck parts online. This is the home page for the Dwyer Aluminum Mast Company. Uh, the URL is DwyerMast.com. So here on the left-hand side is the menu that will stay with you no matter where you go on the website. Uh, and it's what I focused on initially. And looking at the choices here, I chose hardware. And um, then looking at the choices in this sub-menu, I chose goosenecks. That seemed to be what we want. And in here, there's a variety of complete goosenecks uh, with limited descriptions and uh, no breakdown. And, you know, if the only way to get the parts that I wanted was to order a whole gooseneck, I probably would have done it, but I wasn't sure if any of these would provide the parts I needed. Uh, I looked in other places on the on the internet and, and didn't find anything and kept coming back to recheck here and eventually it occurred to me to click on the menu item here on the left for booms. And in here there's a selection of booms and in checking and measuring uh, the boom on my boat I found it corresponded to the DM275 with the dimensions of one and three quarters by two and three quarters. And clicking on that, we find not only information about the boom itself, but below that, parts and accessories. Uh, at the top of the list, we have some outhauls uh, for the boom, including one here with two tangs that probably is exactly uh, what's on 
My Roads 22. Below that, we have um, four goosenecks. And uh, I found in invest investigating further the three of these, the 355-1L, 355-F, and 355-FL, are quite similar. Uh, they vary in uh, how they attach to the mast and uh, how what what mast they're supposed to uh, go with. But as it says here, you can click on the images for further details. And doing that, you get a pop-up window that has a diagram and some further information below. So some of these parts look familiar. Uh, here we have the fork and the universal that correspond to the original equipment on my <clears throat> boat. Uh, and further you can see how uh, Dwyer intended uh, the, the fork in this case to attach to the end of the boom and it's by attaching to uh, the end cap that goes on the mast end of the boom. But uh, since the Rhodes 22 doesn't have an end cap on the mast end of the boom it wouldn't work there and an alternate uh, arrangement had to be made. So down here we see uh, the descriptions. The fork is part number DH315 and the universal is part number DH316 and you can see prices in this column and in the final column you can enter quantities and click add and you can actually buy the individual pieces which was nice but these weren't the pieces I want Coming back to the uh, page for our boom, there's a fourth gooseneck, the DH355 FHD, which says it's heavy duty. And again, you can click on the image to get further details. And here in the diagram, there's some other parts that uh, should look familiar. We have the U bracket which we used item number four and the heavy duty universal item number six U bracket is DH3143 and of course we use two of those and DH334 is the heavy duty universal and we used one of those uh, the bolts that I ordered but didn't use are here as well and you can see again that uh, this U-bracket is intended to be bolted uh, to the cap. So, those are the items I ordered, and it's not really complicated to find them, but you just need to know where to look. So that'll uh, wrap it up on the subject of the gooseneck for the Rhodes 22. Um, hope you found that useful or informative. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.